We've all heard about TV ratings. They're just an estimate of how many people are watching a particular show at a given time, and they're a big deal. But what are these ratings anyway? Where do they come from, and why are they so important? In the United States and Canada, TV ratings are synonymous with one company, Nielsen, which was founded in 1923 by an engineer named Arthur Nielsen. The company uses a technique called statistical sampling to rate the shows. This is the same technique that pollsters use to predict the outcome of elections. To find out who's watching what, the company gets thousands of households to become part of the representative sample for the national ratings estimates. These participants are randomly selected and they're paid a little bit, but not near enough to, you know, quit their day jobs and just watch TV full time. To find out what these people are watching, the company installs a black box on the TVs in a home. Now this isn't the same as a black box on a plane, no, it's just a computer and a modem. The box keeps track of when the TV is on and what it's tuned to. Every night the box gathers up the household's viewing data and sends all this information to the company's central computer. So what do the ratings actually mean? The numbers we see in published ratings typically represent a share of total viewers. So, for example, a 1.0 Nielsen rating indicates that 1% of the 115.9 million estimated TV watching households tuned into a program. The data is also broken off into different demographic ratings, the most important being people ages 18 to 34. Make no mistake, this research is worth billions of dollars. Advertising rates are based on Nielsen's data. That's why a 30 second commercial on one show might cost twice as much as a commercial on a low rated show. Programmers also use Nielsen's data to decide which shows to keep and which to cancel. And there's an elephant in the room here. The way people watch TV is changing. With DVR, Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, other streaming services, TV viewers are more likely to customize their viewing habits, watching stuff when they want to see it, rather than when it happens to be on. As viewing habits continue to fragment across different platforms, advertisers, content creators, and audience members alike are right to ask, how accurate are these ratings? So what's the best way for us to measure what people watch? If you could bring back one show back on the air, what would it be? Let me know in the comments below. And go ahead and subscribe to our channel for more brain stuff every week.